Getting hired as a firefighter can be a long, frustrating process. So in this video, what I wanna do is I wanna walk you through step-by-step step from very beginning to very end, the different steps that you'll come across in the hiring process and give you some resources for each one. Now, whether you're a brand new firefighter or somebody thinking about getting into the fire service, this will help kind of give you a roadmap, or maybe you're in the middle of a hiring process and you know what's coming up next. I'm gonna give you some resources for each one of these to help you prepare for that next step. Let's get started. So before we get into it, the first thing I wanna mention is that I am now doing YouTube Lives on this channel. So if you have any questions about any of this, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so that you know when the next YouTube Live is coming up. Jump in the chat, ask me any questions that you want, whether it be about fitness, firefighting, interviews, or really whatever you want, I don't really care. Also, if you're an experienced firefighter, feel free to jump on the lives as well and give your insight. Uh, I know a lot of you out there have been on fire departments for a long time and have a lot of knowledge to share with the younger generation, so feel free to do that as well. So this process can be kind of slow. Now, it depends on what the department is looking for. If they have a dire need for firefighters, this process is going to speed up a little bit more. Um, but if they have, if they know they have some uh, retirements coming six months, a year out, this process might drag up, drag out up to eight months, maybe even a year long. So just know that going into this, that this isn't a process that's going to happen over the course of a couple of weeks. So almost all fire departments start their hiring process with a written test. Now, what you can expect on this written test, you'll also hear it referred to sometimes as a civil service test. Now, what you can expect with this is it's going to usually be a general knowledge test. They're gonna ask you some math questions, they're gonna ask you some reading questions, some association questions, some memorization questions. Typically, they won't ask you things that you'll need to know as far as specific fire knowledge. Um, because most of the people that are applying at this phase may not already have firefighter certifications or be a firefighter. So it's kind of unfair to ask you those things ahead of time. I've taken ones where there's EMS questions on there, general knowledge EMS questions. It really just depends. Now, in any given area, what a lot of departments will do is they will kind of farm out the testing. Uh, bigger cities will typically do it themselves, but what they will do is they will have different companies that will come in and proctor these tests. So what I would recommend to you is that if you're just getting started and you're looking to get into this, take as many fire tests, or even if you don't wanna be a police officer, take police tests, because a lot of times what they'll do is the same companies that make the same tests for fire will do the same thing for police. So the more exposure you have to these written tests, the more familiar you'll become with them, the more comfortable you'll become with them, and it'll just make the entire testing process easier. Now, um, how to prepare? On this channel, I did an entire series of how to prepare for your civil service exam. I will literally, in these videos, and I'll, I'll link them in the description down below, and for all of these steps, by the way, what I'm going to do is put the heading of each step, and I'll put resources on this channel with links to that video, that specific video, if you want more information. Go watch these videos. I will literally walk you through how to do the different math problems, how to do the different mechanical problems, how to do the different reading comprehension problems, and it will help you a lot. Now there's also some other books out there. Um, when I was preparing for my civil service exam, there was one book that I used that I found very helpful and I will link it in the description below. Um, but also there's two or three others out there. I've never used them so I can't speak for them but I know they have good ratings and I've met some other people that have used them that found them to be particularly helpful. So I will link those down below, scroll through them and uh, whatever, you, whatever you think would be best for you, feel free to obviously use those as well. So after the written test, the next step usually is the fitness test and the background check. Now we'll start with the background check. Now what the department will do is sometimes they make you do this, this will already be done in the application phase, and sometimes they will do this after the written test. What you'll do is you'll get a big packet of paper and they will ask you all sorts of questions. They're gonna fill out where you've lived in the last 10 years, do you have any criminal record, any sort of speeding tickets, all sorts of stuff about you, uh, your past employers, um, some references, just a, your standard general background. And then what they'll do is they'll take that information and they will typically always run a background check just to make sure you are who you say you are, you don't have some sort of crazy criminal record or anything like that. Also in this step is the fitness test. Now, every department's a little bit different. For example, where I work in our area, we don't use the CPAT. If you're unfamiliar with, the, with, with what, excuse me, with what the CPAT is, it's the Candidate Physical Abilities Test, and it's the standard firefighter fitness test out there. 
We don't use that. What we do, uh, most of the departments in this area have the local community college and they put on a firefighter fitness test and you get a certificate after you're done and you, you keep it for a year and you put that in your application packet. Um, Everywhere is a little bit different though. Some places will require you to have that ahead of time. Other places will put on their own fitness test for you to do. Obviously, they wanna make sure that you're fit enough for the job that you can complete the physical tasks. Now on this channel, I did, I have done a video on just what to, how to prepare, just kind of general firefighter fitness uh, uh, tips. I will link that in the description below. And coming this summer, later on in the coming months, I will do a lot more videos <clears throat> specifically related to the CPAP and uh, firefighter fitness. And as those videos come out, I will be sure to add them below. So make sure to look for those as well. The next step, if you pass that, if you pass the test, if you get a clear background check and you don't lie about it and they don't catch it, um, the next step typically is the panel interview. Now, the panel interview is by far the most important part of this entire hiring process. The reason being, is that a lot of times with the panel interview, this is their first time to meet you face to face. And obviously we're living in a time right now where things are becoming increasingly virtual. And I have a, I have a, a video about that down below if you, if you have a virtual interview coming up as well, some tips to, to prepare for that. But this channel pretty much started to help people with the interview. So if you go down below, there's a ton of different videos on the specific aspects of the interview, but this is really important that you get this right. And if you've never had a fire interview before, generally what you can expect in the panel interview is you go in and there will be anywhere from three to five, usually it's officers every once in a while, they'll have a, a line firefighter on there as well, uh, lieutenants, captains, sometimes the chief, uh, assistant chiefs, whoever, and you sit down, all of them on one side of the table, you on the other side of the table, and they ask you questions. Now this can be unnerving to a lot of people. Again, this is their first time meeting you, so you want to make sure that you're prepared and you're ready for this. So use the, the, uh, the resources down below. Um, a lot of people have found them very helpful. The next step after this, if they give you the green light, you've passed the written test, you've passed the fitness test, you've passed the background, you've, you've, they, give you the, they give you the thumbs up after the panel interview, they like you, they invite you to the next step. That's a really big step, by the way. Congratulations for making it past this step. By this time, a lot of people have been weeded out. So if you're past beyond, beyond that, you're doing pretty good. The next step is not all departments do this, but they will do a polygraph and a psychological evaluation. Now, I've talked extensively on this channel about polygraphs and why I don't like them, and I quite honestly think they're unfair. There are uh, links below about how to prepare for the polygraph, what to expect, how to handle it. Um, and there was even one person in the community that I pinned their comment at the top because it was very, very helpful and useful. So if you have a polygraph coming up, make sure you check out that video and read that comment from that individual. It was good stuff. What you can prepare, or I'm sorry, what you can expect in a polygraph or any sort of lie detector test is you will get one of two variations. You will either get a traditional polygraph or you'll get something called a CVSA, Computer Voice Stress Analysis or Analyzer. And what a CVSA is, is they will hook a little microphone right here and they will ask you questions and allegedly, according to how you answer, this microphone picks up stress in your voice and then tells, what, tells them whether or not you're being deceptive or not. Take that for what it is, but that's what they claim. The polygraphs, a little more in depth, um, they're gonna hook you up with a, with a uh, they're gonna put a band around your abdomen to, to sense your breathing. They're gonna put uh, sensors on your fingertips. They're gonna sit you on, you're gonna be sitting on a seat with some sort of motion sensing pad. And what they're gonna do for both of them is they're just gonna ask you questions, usually about that background information packet that you filled out a long time ago. Just, did you lie about this? When did you do this? How many times did you do this? And you answer questions. Now, the psych evaluation is far more common. Uh, like I said, not all departments do polygraphs, but almost every department out there does some form of a psych evaluation. Now, a psych evaluation, there's different variations and different forms of this. The most standard one you'll get is you will go to a, a place, usually they farm this out to a third party service, maybe a local psychologist's office or psychiatrist's office. And what you'll do is you'll sit down and you'll take a very long written test. Um, I've taken ones with 200 questions, some with 400 questions. And they're weird questions in that they'll just make general statements and then you'll rank them uh, strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, strongly agree. Weird statements in the sense of, I like the color blue. And then you'll, you'll agree, disagree, things like that. And they'll ask you a whole bunch of those and it'll give them a printout of information. And then a lot of times what you'll do is immediately after or at some point after that, you'll sit down with a psychiatrist, a psychologist, 
and they will interview you. The point of this is to make sure you don't have any glaring psychological issues um, that are going to be a problem for the department. They also want to make sure that you're going to fit in with the uh, with the culture of the department, that it's not going to be a bad fit based on your psychological profile. Now, with both of these things, the psychological evaluation and the polygraph, um, quite honestly, a lot of times they're used as tools to weed people out. For instance, if a department is looking for specific people with specific skills or knowledge and you don't have that skill or knowledge, but you're a great candidate otherwise, they might use potential deception on a polygraph to weed you out so they can go with other people. It's unfortunate, it's a bummer when that happens, it's happened to me, it's happened to a lot of other people, um, but I promise you what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna work at a department that doesn't want you there. Um, so if that does happen to you, move on from it. It doesn't mean you're a liar, it doesn't mean you're you know, a crazy person because you didn't pass, it happens, um, but just move on from it. So the next step, if you've gotten beyond that, is a lot of times what you will do is you will go into what's known as a chief's interview. And the chief's interview is exactly what it sounds like. You will sit down with the chief, or maybe if it's a really big department, maybe an assistant chief or a battalion chief. And every once in a while I've heard of, um, in these chief's interviews, they'll have the mayor or the safety director or something like that. Maybe it'll be one or two people in there. Um, I've heard of some chief's interviews are quite literally the exact same questions they asked you in the panel interview. They just ask you again. But generally what you'll find in the chief's interviews is they're a little bit more laid back in the sense of they're more conversational. This is your potential future boss and they want to sit down face to face with you and let you know what their expectations are for firefighters and new firefighters, what their expectations would be of you. And they want to get a feel for who you are, who you're, what you're about, um, things like that. Now, the best advice I can give you if you have a chief's interview coming up is number one, I did do a video on that, so go below and check that out. But I guess the best, most general advice I can give you is if you're going into a chief's interview, act as though you're going to meet your significant other's parents for the first time. You're going to be very nice. You're going to be very respectful. Um, but you're also not going to be a robot. And it's not going to be as intense and, and pressure filled as the, uh, as the panel interview. So just know that going into it. Check out that video below. Uh, if you do have something like that coming up, I think it'll help you quite a bit. Now, if you pass all this and you still get the green light, congratulations to you. You've made it very, very far in this process. You're almost done. Um, and typically the, what the next step will be, um, and sometimes these steps are interchanged. It's not always in this order, uh, will be some sort of medical evaluation. Now, this is the easy step. Um, this is the easy step because it's not anything crazy. Uh, they'll do, it's a general physical. They'll probably draw some labs. Uh, they'll probably do a stress test to make sure your heart is able to handle the ups and downs that will come along with actual firefighting. Uh, they'll do an EKG. They'll probably do a drug test. Um, it's pretty basic. It's pretty, pretty simple, pretty generic. Um, as far as different uh, health issues and what they will and won't accept, that I don't know. You'd have to talk to your specific uh, department. But some common ones that I've heard is, can you be a firefighter with diabetes? I don't personally know any firefighters with diabetes, but I'm sure there are some out there. Another popular one, people say, uh, can you be a firefighter with glasses? I'm wearing glasses and I'm a firefighter. I know lots of firefighters with glasses. Um, it's not a big deal at all, as long as you're able to still functionally see and you'd still be able to complete the job, it won't be an issue. Um, so if you, after you do that, after you pass the drug test, after you pass the medical exam, after you pass all the interviews, you have now made your way into the fire academy. Now this is gonna be different depending on where you are. For example, where I live, um, the only really big departments send you to their own academies. Where I live, uh, everybody kinda has to go to their own fire academy, which there's one or two in the area that are very popular, and you get your firefighter certifications and that's part of your application packet. But not every place does it like that. Um, if you work for a big department after you go through the whole hiring process, and now you go on to the academy. Now, if you have an academy coming up or maybe you're in the middle of an academy, I did an entire video on what to expect in the fire academy and how to prepare for it. I will link that down below. Um, this is going to be a little intense and it's designed to be intense. It's designed to push you. Uh, fire departments are paramilitary organizations. They're structured very similar to the military. Um, so they're, they're, you're going to expect you to show up early and stay late. They're going to expect you to be clean shaven and dressed well and ready to go every single day. Um, they're probably going to yell at you. Um, they're going to put you in uncomfortable and intense situations where you're 
it's dark, it's hot, it's tight, you're trapped, that you're gonna have a hard time breathing. It's designed to make you uncomfortable, but it's also designed to push you through. They've already invested a lot of time and money uh, into you at this point. And so if they're paying for you to go through this fire academy, they want to see you succeed, but they need to know that you can pass some basic thresholds. Again, if you have an academy coming up or you're not sure what to expect in the academy, check out the video below. And then finally, the last step, and technically when you're on probation, you've already been hired, um, but it's still an early phase of you becoming an early firefighter. Now probation, after you finish the academy, a lot of times what they'll do is if you're in a big department, they'll assign you to a particular station, uh, to a particular unit. If you're in a smaller department, you just kind of get started and you'll start with your crew. Uh, it depends on where you work. Um, but on probation, you are going to be expected to, you're essentially an apprentice. Uh, you're doing all of the same things that everybody else is doing, but you're going to be expected to learn. You're going to have to learn your maps. You're going to have to learn your equipment. You're going to have to learn your trucks. Uh, you're going to be tested out on different things. They call them J, it's called a JPR book. Uh, Job Performance Review is what JPR stands for, by the way. Um, and it's an entire book of, can this person throw ladders? Can this person pull hose? Can this person do all sorts of different tasks and what they'll do is a officer or a senior firefighter will sign you off on these things over the course of the year. By the way, probation lasts anywhere from I've heard as early as six months to I've heard as long as two years. Generally, most probationary periods are about a year long. Now, if you are on probation or you have a probationary period coming up, I would highly recommend you check out the video I did below, uh, 14 different things you need to be doing on probation. Sometimes people don't know what to do. Uh, things that they can be doing, staying busy, working on, practicing, all of that kind of stuff. I go over all of that in that video as well. So as always, guys, I hope you found this useful and helpful. If you did, click the like button, consider subscribing to the channel, and I hope to see you in one of these YouTube lives. So make sure you click the notification bell as well, and I will see you guys in the next video.